I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man is suck. Everybody, welcome back to the Working Class Souls Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Accardo. What's up, dude? How are you? We're back from Hartford. Yeah, baby. Yes, and we have a guest to kick it off right out of the gate who's very funny. She's on tour right now with Nate Jackson. Please help me welcome to the show, Sura. Sura, what is your craziest day job? Hey, thanks for having me. Of course. Thanks for coming. You know, I don't think I can name one worst day job <laughs> then stand up I think they were all pretty bad in some way yeah 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 that's why I'm no longer doing them that's like the motif of this whole show they yeah. fucking suck yeah like it, they all taught me something very important and that is I don't want to work for anybody else ever <laughs> but being your own boss is tough though as a stand up comedian so I can't say that it's easier right, being okay. your own boss yeah. this is great because here's a part about the business side of stand up now that is so much more clear to me now than it was when I was 10 years in. Because you think, oh, not having a boss would be awesome because I have all these terrible day jobs. Now, with all the bookers I have to deal with, yeah, and are... now that like the tour makes money now, I'm like dealing with things that I never had to deal with before as a comedian, which are equally as annoying <laughs> <laughs> as a day job. Yeah, it's just right? all annoying. Here's the thing. You show up at a gig and you have this like temporary boss for two hours. Yeah. Right? Someone you just, Dude, even as a, a contract, you gotta well. just yeah. shine them on to get uh-huh. the gig over with. Yeah. You know, and just like you would with any boss. He's not like a real boss, but he's like, it fits the kind of profile, of, especially if they're a fucking asshole. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my gosh. There are some uh, characters in this business. Yeah, well, you've been on the, you've been touring uh, with Nate. How's that been? I mean, I mean, it's been great. I feel like, I thought tour life was gonna be like, oh, I get to see all these different cities. But you just fly in, you do the show, and you're out. Yeah, you yeah. So it's like the impression of a city was whatever the venue looked like, you know? <laughs> kind of sounds like your regular, your day job, which is uh, you're a stewardess, right? You're working on an airline? Well, we call it a flight attendant now. Flight attendant. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> When's I'm the old. last time you flew? Not, not, a Philly knucklehead? <laughs> hey, no. Uh, can I get another doors yeah. over here? He's still lighting yeah. cigarettes on an airplane right? this guy. He still expects lobster on a 30-minute flight. Like, what the hell? <laughs> I think that's a great job for a comedian. Yes and no. The cool thing about being a flight attendant is you're probably only working, like, less than half the month. Minimum. Oh. Uh-huh. Wow, I didn't... Less than half less a Less than half wow. the month. Um, however, like, minimum days off is 11 for my airline. So it's a little less than half, or it could be all the way up to 18 days off. I think I saw 18 days off. And then you can get rid of some of your schedule. Trade, right? By yeah. My dad people. worked, it wasn't a, a flight attendant, but he worked for the airline, which have similar scheduling stuff where you're like giving away shifts. You can give away, you can take shifts, make overtime. I mean, back well, then, I don't know about restaurant, now. Restaurant work was like that. It's you similar. You can trade out all the time. Yeah, people yeah. are always trying to yeah. get rid of shifts. Yeah, yeah. But I end up having to pay people to work my shifts. That's yeah. how so much people don't want to work right now in this day and age. It's kind of hilarious that I have to pay not to work. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? So w- when you get that many days off, like firemen get a lot of days off, but their job's so stressful. Your job is stressful. Some days, the next day, all I want to do is sleep. I mean, I cannot imagine all the time. I fly sh- coach. You know, they don't <laughs> they don't pay for me to fly anything fancy. So I'm flying the coaches of the coach. I can't imagine <laughs> the way some of these people act like you owe them something. Yeah as a flight attendant and I love how you have to like reiterate I'm here for your safety yeah. I'm not a waitress I'm here yeah. for your safety yeah, yeah yeah and there's like a point zero 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 one chance that hopefully I ever have to do something truly like life or death related but there that's why we're there but the most of the time like 99.0 whatever the <laughs> other half of that fraction is, is is me just passing out cookies and yeah, diet cokes or like can you buckle your can you lift your fucking seat up yeah can, that yeah. is the thing can, why does this person have to tell you 50 times it's so you're cool. just so much more important than us shitbird i i wanted to beat so many people up on a flight ed and you can't <laughs> You can't. I'm, I'm dying for one of those chances to duct tape a motherfucker. I want, like, oh, Surat to seen, get on the thing. Have you ever seen anybody get duct taped? Not in person. Oh, you, dude. I so, want to be the guy yeah, that has to do that. Dude, Just, that would be amazing. Oh, man. So I think let I could me thrive ask you this about job. the duct taping. So after that first duct taping uh, uh, instance that went kind of viral, did, were, were you guys buzzing about it? Were you guys like, yo, so where do we keep Or was it the cats tape? out of the bag? Like, they what? figured out that we duct tape people. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> 
I mean, they only provide masking tape on my flight, so I'm wondering where they got this duct oh, tape. Do I need to bring gaffer? my own? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> some gaffer had into a gig. Uh, yeah, well, that's a good one. That's like uh, that tape's as strong as handcuffs. Oh, oh I would duct tape anyone God, would be the on best. a flight. I to hate watch people somebody on a- getting duct taped. <laughs> Why do people lose it on a flight more than ever now? I think their brain cells just kind of diminish once that air pressure, that cabin pressure eyes. Uh, but you maybe? know, 20 years ago, I mean, maybe because sure. there's no social media back then, but even before the pandemic, I don't remember. Maybe it as just wasn't social media wasn't it. as prevalent, so you didn't see how many people were losing it. Okay. That's true. Yeah, right. Like the phones weren't around, right? Five like, years ago, though, they were. Yeah. I'm, I just I feel like after the pandemic, people got the minute they said you had to wear a mask, so uh, something happened in everybody's brain that got on a plane. Yeah, yeah, that's like true. I flew right when you were allowed to fly. Well, first. I think the other thing that happened too, though, was these airlines they started making the seats smaller. It, I think it's a combo effect. It's what you're so, doing to the people when they're on the flight. Yeah, you're getting these smaller. Like they're just taking inches off, right, so they can fit one more row of seats in a. Well, bag. no, you know they say like when they. When they made the seats smaller, like six inches that they took back made them an additional million dollars a year. <laughs> so, I mean, of course they're going right. to do that. So, ha- did you notice that with, like, the, when they changed the seats? Oh, I only fly first class. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I don't, I'm not familiar with any of the stuff you're talking about. <laughs> Or, <laughs> we're working class holes here. We don't, we've never flown first class or anything. Well, only or, only flies first class or that seat that's like... Well, it's like a bed? It's like a jump seat. Jump no, it's like that jump seat, oh, right? The, are you talking about the pod? Yeah. The, the lay down pod? Or the, are you talking about the jump seat? I'm talking about the jump seat that's like... That oh, looks yeah. like you're just like, hey, man, I can eject from this. Yeah. Oh, 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 I thought you were talking about the actual first class seat itself. Well, the first class or yeah, because yeah. she's working. Oh. I mean, they sit on that the, like ejector oh, seat. Oh, yeah, yeah, Their yeah. fucking feet aren't even touching the ground. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a... It's it's a stark contrast. I'm either in the lavatory or first class, you know, whatever I can get. Yeah. What, uh, how many people have you caught having sex on the flight um, in your career? You know, sadly, like not enough. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't caught anyone. Less than 10? You know, I think our flights are too short. Oh. Like, yeah. Because like, you need like an overnight, right? People aren't bra- <laughs> as, I mean, it's funny. Everyone thinks they're so brazen. Like whenever you watch any kind of pornography that's like amateur, there are people that will do it with the blanket over them. But it's always those European puddle jumper flights where there's like rows of people missing and then it's I never notice. a crowded flight. This is a category I've never searched. Uh, I, 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 uh, have to, I have to update my, uh, do, bro- widen my <laughs> horizons. When your rivers run deep like I do, you got to... <laughs> You got to find out what's on the bottom of the bank there. You know, Josh, you gotta, what did the airplane porn. Dude, you don't watch airplane porn? Come on. <laughs> anywhere you're not supposed to have sex, I want to figure out if someone's been able to actually accomplish the sex. Uh, have you ever caught anybody like giving like a hand job or anything like that? Like, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> it's not confirmed. I didn't want to shake hands to confirm. But, <laughs> but it was so weird. There were two guys in first class, middle seat open between them. I walk by and they move next to each other, put oh, a blanket over themselves. They were, oh, for sure. cru- they cruise each other. For sure. Wow. And then moved back. <laughs> oh, that's I guess so it being didn't a work gay out. dude is so, yeah. it worked out great. They both came and moved back to their seats, uh, and yeah, that was right? it. That's like, the greatest thing about being a gay dude. <laughs> That's I if I could have that Isn't an amazing in my guys? life, what or you could just have life. a moment of like. I'm horny, you're horny. There's no emotions here. Let's do something wild. And then I'd have to, I'm not looking at you the rest and of the flight. Right. And I'm never going to talk to you. I'm not exchange a fucking yeah. social media handle. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Just That's what life should be like. Uh, and amazing. honestly, I think if more women were able to do that, they would enjoy dissing men a lot more. Like men are awful. So then use them for that. Just use them for those exploratory moments until you find the guy that you want to settle down with. You know what? I'll tell you what. Dudes <laughs> dudes would fuck that up. Of course they would. We all dudes uh, would fuck it's not we're I so don't stupid. Even, we're I don't so even dumb. blame women on that. No, no, dudes would fucking fuck that oh, up. Oh, they would. For minute, sure. Uh, you guys someone, already do. That's why we don't do it. Yeah. It's I've never fucked, fucked it up. up. Yeah, yeah. I made it my life not to fuck it up. Yeah, yeah, so uh, there's yeah. a lot of us that have there's it. A, there's a few guys. There's a few out guys there. that are, that are good at detail. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of, yeah. Most of you fuck it up. Hey, so what are you doing later? Like you just <laughs> fucked it up. Yeah. You just fucked it up. <laughs> so what did you do before that, and why did you choose being a flight attendant? 
Because it's hard work and it's hard to get into. It's not easy to get hired, is it? Uh, nowadays, it's kind of like, hey. Well, now it's like they're hard to find people, right? You got a pulse, come on through, you know? <laughs> but back in the day, you used to get great stock options. I remember in Southwest where my dad worked, he got yeah. a lot of great stock options in the ni- early 90s into the late 90s. They treated their employees fairly well. They had a match. I mean, you could, not, you could barely have a high school diploma and get a job at the airline and do pretty well for yourself not all airlines are created equal some are yeah. harder to get into yeah. than others like delta used to say hey we're harder to get into than harvard that was their little oh yeah, really that was their marketing statistic. pitch yeah. yeah i don't know if that's still true after post pandemic yeah. but it was true at a point okay and then you know certain airlines are just easier to get into than others but yeah. i got into it because i was just in between jobs before i was working marketing Oh. I was doing this travel marketing where I would fly in and fly out for like auto shows um, before that computer. Is that what led you to stand up because you're a front and center in marketing and you thought, oh, I, I have kind of a flair for being front and center? <laughs> I did. One of the jobs that I did work, um, but I was kind of starting stand up at that point, was an MC for a computer company but it was not like it sounds a lot more fun than it was we'd be like at a teacher's conference i'd be like yeah guys come check out our computer and they'd be like not even listening to you so yeah. i guess it did kind of help Isn't that out great so i make a ton of money off comedy adjacent so stuff like that where uh-huh. i i'm getting booked because i'm a comedian uh-huh. and to be funny yeah but it's not like i'm you know going to play madison square garden or some five thousand seats theater i'm going to play at a fucking event where no one really wants to hear me I have to captivate a full room for 600 bucks. You know, so that's like how, because it's a first world, it's a third world country rather in comedy. You have a few people making great money, playing great gigs, and then people like me that can make a decent amount of money playing all those gigs that those guys don't have to pay, like play anymore. It, but those gigs are so not fun. <laughs> There's like oh. nothing fun about them. Oh. Zero fun involved. Oh. So you're doing like emceeing this thing and you're thinking, Oh man, this is going to be great. I'm actually, I got the mic in my hand. I'm making money, but in reality. Yeah. In reality, I'm still going at night and trying open mics. And I kind of basically used it as like my comedy tour work. Just didn't know about it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're doing, um, oh, yeah. Nice. You do so shows in those to... cities. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, we were traveling like for six months. We were just oh. traveling from city to city. They put us up. Wow. Gave us a per diem. Hell That's yeah. That's a great way to get Shit started, yeah. honestly. Because Shit you're yeah. popping into new scenes. Yeah. I mean, you don't, and you don't burn any... An open mic comic. And yeah, you don't yeah, burn yeah. any club stuff because yeah. you're not working. You're, if you're going to do it, you're doing open mic. Yeah, you're doing open mic. This is early on, right? Yeah, yeah this, this was is like, before you're in clubs and stuff. Yeah. That's a great one. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're not starting out in a big city where you can't get any mic time. And if you do get any time at a club, you're going to burn it. Because you're not funny enough yet. Yeah, right. Yeah, you burn out. It's you get all your bullshit out of the way. So <laughs> many people burn out in oh, like yeah. the New York open mic scene just because they can't get out of it. And you're just like, you've been seen too much by every doing that's the a same great jokes. idea. Yeah, that's wild. How long did you do that for? Uh, I did that particular gig for six months. And then I did another gig where we work for Dick Sporting Goods, kind of doing something similar, promoting jerseys and stuff Mm -hmm. and i also use that as my low-key comedy tour too hell yeah but we were like in such remote places sometimes that there was was no room to go yeah Yeah. Yeah. like the nearest show was like an hour and a half you know because you're originally from detroit yeah michigan michigan Michigan. because my family's from like i'm going on tour in detroit uh next week oh nice two weeks i'm sorry two weeks fuck i don't know where i'm at today uh i love detroit i love playing detroit it's one of my favorite cities to play yeah uh I love it there because it's our brand. Like Hartford, we yeah. did Hartford. That's our that's our people. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like working middle class people, yeah. lower working middle class people. Michigan always has great moderate politics in some places. Like mm-hmm. Detroit has the perfect amount of liberal and the perfect amount of moderate. You know, and then if you go further out, you kind of hit like a yeah. weird patch. But that's when you know your fucking jokes work. I love the Midwest for that. I, yeah. But my jokes, if I can do a room that's split down the middle yeah. politically. <laughs> And I'm killing, I know I wrote the, the best possible joke I could have wrote about that. I just know it. And that's why I always love those places. Did you like, did your career starting there? Was that like no, a I good place to Miami, start? No, I started in Miami actually. Whoa, yeah. how did that happen? I just moved there after college and like the internship that I did during college offered me to move there afterwards. And I said, all right, cool. I moved down there, worked um, for that company for uh, maybe five months and then they laid me off. <laughs> 
And I'm like, well, I'm already They're here. Like, <laughs> She's doing open mics. She's not even <laughs> No, I hadn't even started up. comedy yet. I hadn't even started comedy yet. But uh, yeah, I I just did it. They, they moved me down there for five months. And then it wasn't until like living in Miami for maybe over a year that I started comedy. So, but I think Miami or anything like medium cities are great to start comedy in. Like I wouldn't yeah. want to start in New York. Starting in New York so hard. Yeah, so I started hard. in San Diego, and they only at the time I started they only had two rooms. It was La Jolla, and then one other room that did comedy on a weekend. So it was um, now if you started in, in San Diego, you would probably be able to make a career out of it because there are like nine comedy clubs now. Oh, wow. There are so many fucking oh, wow. comedy clubs. That's they crazy. just opened a new one. In San Diego? So San Diego is just booming. It's like oh, shit. comedy store. They got Madhouse. They have American Comedy Club. Uh, they got this new place called the Yellow Door. Uh, Grand um, something comedy club. Uh, and then there's other ones that are like comedy three nights a week. Mm -hmm. So you have a chance to get wow. up. Like That's ten great. times That's in cool. a week. That's yeah. a lot. That's San insane. Diego's not that big. No, it's not. Well, it's like the tenth largest city, though. Is it really? It's spread out. The city itself is small, but there's so many adjacent cities that are considered under San Diego's umbrella. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha, gotcha but it's gotcha, like yeah, the tenth. Yeah. I think it, it it ranks as the tenth largest city right now. Huh. But uh, the, there but too. for comedy, I can't. Believe, I think it's because it's a tourist city. So yeah. many people are there on vacation. You can get people to show up to anything out there. Huh. It's wild. Is but Miami like that? Miami was a tourist city too, and I feel I like it doesn't like translate like that. It it's didn't. too much party, right? There was everybody wants to do exactly that, like yeah. show out. Yeah, and, yeah, um, wear a thong. You know, the yeah. whole nine. And Men going and to a comedy club and laughing would like just mess their Botox up too much. So <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I did a tour in Miami, and it was three dates, like in those like Palm Beach, like Fort Lauderdale, Miami, like all those little surrounding areas, right? Those little mm -hmm. cities, uh, awful. Like, oh. I mean, it's like if they didn't hear that fucking dopey club siren like that, <laughs> e -e -e, they didn't want to show it. If you were playing that out front, you could have attracted 50 people into that room. It's like they only show up if they hear It's like the bad symbol for people. <laughs> Cocaine and that like sound is the bad symbol for people in Miami. Dude, South Beach, my wife and I booked, uh, this is, I don't know, it must be 15 years ago now. We booked this vacation to get away. It was Memorial Day weekend and it's in South Beach. And we land, and the taxi can't get us to the hotel because there's so much traffic. And I'm like, what's going on? And we had been there once before, but now we're, he's like, I got to let you out here. And we're like six blocks, seven blocks from the hotel, so we're carrying all our stuff. And <laughs> as we're going, I'm like, man, there's a lot of black people. <laughs> was it Memorial Day weekend? It was fucking <laughs> uh, like Urban Week or whatever they yeah, call it, Beach Week. I've Memorial always, I've been there it twice now on Urban Week. Fucking <laughs> wild, dude. It was so yeah. fucking wild. It, people Miami, are turning up in the leave, middle of the we street, too. We that weekend. It got so crazy that I remember I lived on South Beach. They would have a police stop where you have to show your license to prove that you live where you're going. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cause we pulled into the, uh, and we were staying at a nice place too. We get in there and the woman behind the counter was like, like she's like twitching out. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> and I go, what's going on? She goes, what's going on? What's going on? Somebody got shot last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And I was like, what? Dude, I hate uh, working with the public. I'm so impressed by you being able to work with the public. The more and more I'm talking about like going to places where I, I hate having to be around people, I realize there are people that have to deal with those people. Oh, and yeah. And that yeah. must be, uh, you do the Lord's work. Oh, my God. I could not talk to people. I worked at one of the most pretentious steakhouses in Miami Beach. And that, I mean, I love that job because it actually was kind of where I started comedy, like where I got the push to do comedy. How so? My coworkers were like, um, because it was... It was Prime 112. I'll just say it. Fuck it. Who cares? Fuck them. Yeah, people people know about it. Yeah. And it was like the classiest steakhouse up until about 9, 30, 10. And then it turned into like a low-key nightclub. Like uh, he, went, it, he went from playing Frank Sinatra to 2 chains. Yeah. And Isn't that funny? Everything has to be a dual thing where like you can only be classy for so long and then you have to turn I mean, it into a nightclub. I mean, it wasn't classy. It well, was you just, know what I mean though? Like they... Everywhere in Miami I went, it, it felt like at 10 p.m. Uh -huh. they had the to put time. all the nice, yeah. the yeah. nice <laughs> stuff away, and then just make it into like, and you come and come on the floor here. Yeah. Who wants to get come on their pants? Go on in. Like we'll do it here. Like and wild. You walk out on that beach like at midnight. Mm -hmm. There's just 
just bodies fucking on that <laughs> kids, dude. Insane. It's crazy. I was like, there was kids running around on here <laughs> eight hours ago. <laughs> yeah. So you, you, did they do a show there and you ended up doing a spot or how did they push you to get in a stand-up? It was basically like a bunch of very fancy, like entitled people would come there and they would overbook, notoriously overbook. Like there'd be 400 tops and then they would book it for like 800 people and so all these people would arrive at the same time and they would be pissed they'd be like i have to wait an hour for my table what was the point of a reservation if i and i get it like it's annoying you you a hostess or i was a hostess oh so you had and so i had to deal with like straight up the people to our face and it would just it was a tiny restaurant wasn't that big yeah and um we'd be crowded in there and we had to wear heels and people would try to slip us money to move up on the list. Yeah. And there was like a lot of um, politicking going on. So let me ask you something here. You're uh, working in an industry where Miami is all about your looks. You cannot get a front of house job in a place like that unless you fit a certain look, right? Oh yeah, I was for sure their token Asian. So it was 100%. like, so it was like what you wore, did you like, we had plan to wear that? Heels. Did you plan like going in for interviews to get these jobs? Like, okay, I gotta dress sexier. I have to play this look in, in Miami. Everywhere in Miami, you gotta look hot. Like okay. you, women would wear heels at the grocery store. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. You, it's just a culture. You couldn't get into the nightclub if you're wearing flats. Yeah. Like here in New York, nobody wears heels. If you do, you can tell you're a tourist, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in Miami, it's like you have to look on point. And um, yeah, that was no exception. Like we had to wear heels for like eight hours. I don't know how I did it. Yeah, I know that's crazy. That is nuts. Um, And uh, but all your jobs so far that you've mentioned have been jobs where you have to be like front and center, where you need to look a certain way. Oh yeah, like I used to. They don't hire flight attendants if they're they look. They used to not anyways. I mean, everyone I've ever seen, don't you have to be a certain weight? I mean, I still certain height. As long as you can fit in a jumpsuit. (laughs) Yeah, now there is that is not apply. Like you had to be attractive. That does not apply (laughs) at all. Okay, you guys are both stuck in the 1940s. All right. I fly all the time, and I certain airlines have better looking flight attendants, male and female. I'm not talking just female. I'm talking male and female. You know. But then other lines are like, wow, you're, I don't know how you keep the other gremlins in the galley. Terrible (laughs) personality. You look terrible. How'd you get this job? I don't know if I fly enough to put that kind of data together. I don't really have. Oh, I can name off air. I'll name the airlines. that have the best looking people work for them. Oh, wow. Let yeah, guess. I have it narrowed down. Oh, I only fly on. those airlines. Do you, do you have any kind of... Because uh, you work at different airlines, right? Okay, I will say this. The most glamorous airlines are the ones in from the Middle East or Asia. Oh, yeah. I was going to say Emirates. Emirates has point. some smoke shows. Oh, oh my gosh. I've flown Emirates a lot to yeah. go to Europe. And like It's embarrassing when it's I like see dimes. what they look like compared they're to dimes. us. Like, oh, and they're not shit. even showing it because they have to wear the... They, they usually have head they stuff. Because Emirates, it. yeah, you have to... You know, they're Muslim, so it's like a... They have like a that's part of the uniform. The hijab, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But beautiful. Like stunning huh. people. Yeah. Huh. Very good looking. Asia, very hot. You yeah. know, they're flight attendants. It's like an honor to be a flight attendant over there. Yeah. Here. Like Singapore Air, where a lot of those pods exist where you can basically like a little house first class is mm-hmm. you fly on when you have to fly like a 20 hour flight yeah god i know I'm, i feel so out of the loop here <laughs> no, it's so funny you say that like you can Let's lay down this, on so we're we're on the road right and you know we have all these random conversations in the car yeah you've been in a car with a comedian for five hours you just talk about random shit mm-hmm. and i'm like hey man how much money would you need this is just happened last weekend oh, yeah, yeah. how much money would you need to consider yourself like money enough to where you are stable and really comfortable but you're not an asshole yet and he's like, well, I don't know what the amount would be, but it would be I could fly first class anytime I want. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like, so it's a couple hundred grand? <laughs> <laughs> You're like my buddy. And like, I, I grew up a bunch of like ghetto ass dudes. And I'm like, hey, man, what would be your dream car? He's like, I'd love to have a Saturn. <laughs> Wow, you need to get new friends. Shoot for the stars, bro. <laughs> he is Saturn is in get space. A Saturn, man, I would I would feel all right if I had a Saturn. Oh my gosh, it's so funny you said that, and I meant that so sincerely, dude. I was like, if I could just fly first class and not worry about it, that would mean I was doing all right. That would, <laughs> and I could call them stewardesses; they wouldn't correct me because I had a first class seat. I could jiggle my my drink at them. Hey, yeah. It's a little light, sweetheart. Sweetheart. I hate thou. Hey, sweetie. Uh, <laughs> hey, refresh me when you get shot. Thanks so much. What uh so you have like a, a really interesting background. When you started doing stand up, how much of it was 
based on the Americanization of you and how much was based on what you knew about your past? Like, because I always found that interesting for myself. Like, I couldn't talk about my dad's meth habit or any of the shit I was going through till like five years in because I didn't know how to make it funny. It was too emotional. Oh, yeah. So whenever I hear that someone has like a story, like adversity, how long does it make it? into the act until it makes it into the act that's my was, question it's it was my first couple of jokes so honestly, right out of the gate I yeah. only i kept getting told like talk what you know about and i'm mm -hmm. like all right what makes me different and then i have to address the elephant in the room which is being asian right they expect x y and z out of you when you're asian and then um yeah i think that i think my first joke was about my fingers having missing fingers you guys notice? So, oh, no, I did not magic. notice. Yeah. I did not notice. So I think that was like my first like joke on stage because I was like, oh, it makes me different. Mm -hmm. Like nobody else can steal that joke. Yeah, right. Really? Like maybe like, you know. That's so oh, great. Yeah. So I didn't get that tip. I was trying to be the same because I came in older. I started older and I didn't realize, man, it took me a long time to figure out. And it Your wasn't uniqueness. until a yeah. comic told me it was like. I'm like, yeah, you know, I used to smoke crack. I don't talk about it. And he goes, dude, you should totally. That's all it's worth. About. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, dude, that's no, that's so that's pretty fucking unique. You should talk yeah. about that. And I was like, oh, I had no I was trying to. And it was such a uh, like it's the wrong way to do comedy for like the first like year and a half for me because I was like trying to fit in mm -hmm. with comics. Yeah. Who fucking cares about comics? Yeah. You're trying to make the fucking audience like <laughs> you gotta make yeah, your yeah. own voice. Exactly. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Was so it was not hard to talk about that stuff. Well, at all. I just I I feel like also whenever you have something different about you, kind of have to address it. Yeah. Like right. Did you away. do that when you were young too? Address it with new friends and new no, schools? No, I was or have totally to? scared of like you know like I noticed like here shake my hand, like people would notice immediately and try to be like <clears throat> you know try to like sneak in a look. <laughs> Oh, to see what yeah. just happened. Yeah, yeah like, yeah, what did I just do? Did, yeah, what's did my, you just do a yeah. magic trick? Like, what <laughs> yeah. the hell? Like, what am I feeling right now? And I could just immediately sense it, and I like wouldn't address it. I would right. just like try to hide it, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah, right. like hold like my hand. I mean, I still revert to it sometimes, I bet. right? Yeah, 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 sure. It's just like a natural thing, yeah. and um, yeah, like not. I didn't talk about it. Like, I remember I overheard girls like, "Oh, what happened to her finger?" You yeah. Know? Right. Sure. And um, I would hide it. I remember I hit it. I hit it so well that I went to the same school from kindergarten to eighth grade. And on eighth grade graduation, this guy shook my hand. And he goes, "Congratulations!" And he goes, "When did this happen?" Wow. <laughs> oh, he thought it just happened. He thought it was like a new thing. Oh, oh that's he so didn't crazy. Notice for <laughs> the nine years we went to school together. Because See, that's why I wanted to. Uh, that's why I'm glad I brought this up because I really do believe that. Uh, there's always something that makes you want to be judged on stage every single night of your life. There's like a certain thing about us. It's something kind of like take we're taking something back. We have control of something we want to talk about. And when you're hiding, so I know for me, like hiding all the shit I was totally ashamed of about myself, whenever I got on stage and figured out how to mold that into a joke, I felt like, oh, gotcha. I figured out a way now or I can do this. And now I'm taking it back. Now it's yeah, mine yeah. Yeah, right. instead of yours. You yeah, know, yeah, I yeah. love that. I love yeah, that part great. of stand up. That's the only part that I'm like, oh, this is all worth it just for that alone. It's like you, you took something back. Yeah, yeah. Well, owning it is like, oh, it's so. It's the fact you were able to do that the first set, though, pff, the first like year, <laughs> it's pretty impressive. That's great. Well, then I got really. Um, I just started talking like about like stupid shit like oh I pretend I used to pretend this one of the worst jokes I remember having was <laughs> guys uh I got a I got a tattoo of a dick on my back and uh that's that way when guys ride me they know they have to be this tall to ride this ride like <laughs> well I mean those are but, yeah, so, I don't have but yeah, one but at least tattoo you I never <laughs> would have a tattoo and like especially not of that like it was so but then you would talk about your fingers cringe. that would be real so it all be <laughs> balanced some people just have a whole act of hack shit yeah at least when you're starting out you had something that was real you could build a foundation on you know unlike ed's talking about not smoking crack <laughs> it's whole hack shit been my about whole, smoking crack. My, yeah my whole uh all my first jokes were about anal <laughs> <laughs> true or not true what, uh, Wish, wishes are <laughs> It was a little, a little, a little comedy, a little comedy. <laughs> Just you know the genre. I was a genre, anal genre, the whole genre of anal. Mostly wow. anal jokes. <laughs> and now you're still. What kind of act you got? Just mostly <laughs> anal jokes. 
<laughs> is that why your podcast calls working class holes? <laughs> you just forever tied to the ass. Yeah, Maybe. always, always about the asshole. Yeah, subtext for Eddie. <laughs> what uh, what is it like now being on the road with someone that uh, you're working with someone who has a following, so you get to actually be a true opener, not have to worry about selling tickets. You get to build your act, which I always thought when I was featuring, that was my wasn't my favorite part of my career, but a I love the development. I develop the most featuring because you usually get the, a host that does 10 up front to warm them up and then you get that 30, 25 to just let loose. And as you were getting stronger and getting closer to being a headliner, your 30 was so tight. And that's when you realize, like I, I remember I was working with this guy and he goes, hey, you can't open for me anymore. And I'm like, well, why? He goes, because like it's, you're just, you gotta start headlining now. Like it's. Up front, it's too. You're just ready. Like it's, He's like, like, you're stop destroyed. Stepping on my. You're destroying, left. dude. I, you know, I got nothing. Yeah, right, when you, right, right. when I come up, I, I have nothing left. And now, as a headliner, I understand that now. Like, oh, okay, it's a business move. It's not yeah, yeah. personal, but I love that fucking feature spot. That was That's like the nicest way to get fired. That's a great. It's <laughs> yeah, the right. greatest yeah, way yeah, to get yeah. fired. You're yeah. too good. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's over. Know. You've yeah. you've yeah. grown too much. Now you have to move on do you yeah. feel like that that's like the way you're going like building that 30 minutes at 25 um i definitely feel like i am working on like being undeniably good yeah you know because there are still like last night i bombed for sure <laughs> it was just not my night you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i'm not saying that as a headliner you'll never you're never gonna bomb but they just like, become different bombs like perspectives different you're like oh i got laughs but i really wasn't my rhythm was off. Like it, it starts to become more nuanced when you're bombing instead of just flat out. Yeah. <laughs> throwing tomatoes at me tonight. Yeah. Kind of thing. Dude, we bombed. We were in Pittsburgh. I was just telling the story that uh, we were in Pittsburgh and <laughs> there was a host. Host isn't doing well. He's doing like 10 up top. He, you know, he's not doing well. I'm like, okay. I go up. Man, I bombed for 25 minutes <laughs> just straight. And it's like after like 10 minutes, I was just like, all right, well, I'm just going to say all these words. Yeah, he's like, I just got to get <laughs> through gonna, this. I'm going to finish all time, these words. Check. And I get off and, you know, Josh goes up and the host is like, he's like consoling me. He's like, yeah, this room is tough, man. I'm here all the time. It's a tough room. And as he's saying it. Josh is killing so hard. The <laughs> laughter is so loud. He's got to raise his voice. He's got to like, no. It's like a it's like a tough room. Like people have a hard time here. Hey, let's step outside where we can finish this conversation. <laughs> It's not you. It's definitely the audience. <laughs> Dude, I was like, stop. Just stop. Yeah. Just stop talking. Please. <laughs> so so when you, how often are you on the road and how often are you in the city? What is that? Like, how do you balance both of those out and the job? Like, what's your schedule like week to week, typically for you? <laughs> there is no set schedule. I have no really? game rhythm. I have no set time of So your when I'm sleep home. patterns are fucked it's up? It's so messed up. Yeah, I'm trying. Every time I try to get a good sleep schedule, there's going to be that 1 4 a.m. flight yeah. that messes it all up. Yeah. And then it's so hard to wake up at a reasonable hour. And then... How do you take care of yourself then? Like, how do you... Like, what do you get... When is your workout schedule? What is your vitamins like? Because honestly, when you're flying, I mean, what that's you, my how, primary care doctor. No, no. I'm, here's what I like to deep there's dive. A scale out there. We got a little. We're gonna take a I am obsessed with after this. I am obsessed, obsessed with treating my body Dude, and what it's doing. Room together in a hotel, and he's like, "So I do like a morning workout." And I'm like, "Okay." I'm gonna go sit outside. <laughs> I'm on like 15 different supplements. Like I don't fuck yeah. around, man. My body is. If it's true though. I don't like, want to feel. He takes care of himself. I want to feel my best. That's so. great. You know, yeah. and I feel like when you, I mean, you're young, but I feel like when you have a job that's that demanding, where you're got that, you're up in the air. Mm -hmm. I mean, after I fly, I'm fucking dehydrated. I'm exhausted. Yeah, you were older though. She's. I but, mean, but I was younger, like that dude. even in my 20s. I don't like flying. I'm, Asian. I'm 72. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I'm always like wondering how do people keep themselves sharp when they have to do all that travel? Because that's like a thing for me. I'm I sure do the audience try to eat know. healthy. I drink a lot of water, meditate. Okay. You know. Oh, you meditate? Yeah. See what I'm yeah. saying? Course, you know? Nice. You use an app or like you just use your brain? Uh, <laughs> 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 I wish I could just use an app and then turn off my brain. <laughs> but it's kind of both. Yeah. But I definitely try to get into a rhythm. Like I try to, you know, stretch, exercise, read, write, meditate every day. But it doesn't always happen. But you know it needs to be done if you're feeling... 
that's the point I'm trying to make with the audience. They don't. They just think we go up on stage. They don't know that we are in a fucking car for eight hours. <laughs> we feel like garbage. Yeah. We're exhausted. We just flew a seven hour flight. We had to work. Like yeah. we, you, you don't know what I have to do every day to be on point. Mm-hmm. Let me ask on you stage. guys about this because uh, how do you guys feel about the nap? You take a nap. Oh, I love a nap. Uh, can't, oh, I'm a napper. Can't nap. be long. If I sleep for two hours, though, I feel like oh. I didn't sleep at all. I have to keep uh, it to really? 45. I have to oh. power nap. Really? Yeah, oh, that's like I can the sweet sleep spot. for like four hours yeah. during the day. And I wake up like and feel refreshed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll still kind of be tired. That's what I mean. I don't want to feel tired. I'm not refreshed. as tired the as if sh- I don't sleep. Yeah. The shower. The, the cold hot, shower? You guys into cold showers? I do the hot shower. Ooh, I do a cold really shower. Hot? Cold yeah, showers are good for waking up. I wish I had a plunge pool, to be honest. That would be fucking... That gets all that shit. Plunge pools where where it's at. My sister does that. I'm it, afraid I get sick. No, I catch you would a cold not. Really, that's nah. a that's a myth though. <laughs> but bro, I catch a cold if there's like too much air conditioning. It's because of on. your nose. Yeah, I'm it's because you got the nose, nose problems. So yeah. all the shit that gets in there is what's causing the, the illness, not the cold plunge. Yeah, but being cold. <laughs> <laughs> He's still, I get sick. You had a mom that I'm was fucking like freeze you like a with your I'm freeze your head. You, when I'm in like too much air, I need like a little shawl. <laughs> oh my gosh. I need like a little cover up. I put, little Vicks vapor up yeah. for Eddie's chest. When I'm on what an are airplane, you a too, lady? I'm like, can I get an extra blanket? <laughs> oh my god, you're one of those guys. You're one of those guys. Oh my gosh. Uh, doll, excuse me, sweetheart. <laughs> excuse me. You got any slippers? I need some slippers. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, so, are you also included in the black community because of the <laughs> way you, you have such what? a twang to your speech? Is that like from Detroit, from the streets of Detroit? I don't know where it's from. I don't know. I thought I spoke normal. I didn't know I had a twang. People say all the time, "Oh, where are you from? The South? Where are you from? Oh, I hear the Midwest." I hear, I hear, I sound like everything. So I'm not sure at this point. You're so unique because you have that. So people would go, hey, the Asian girl that has that twang or like Asian girl with the f- the finger thing or the Asian girl. Like you have so many things <laughs> that people can go, can I, can I find you? How do I find you? I feel like you'd be so easy to just look up. You have so many things that people could go, oh, yes, I know who that is. <laughs> That's why That's I, I dyed my hair blonde. I didn't have enough. Bl- you know? And you're blonde too. You're like, yes, the that, yes, how her. Been, how long have you been going blonde? Before comedy? It's been or? about a year. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so it's new. Yeah. Last August. Oh, right on. Cool. Yeah. So. Do yeah, blondes have think... more fun? <laughs> 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 I have a joke about this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, good. Okay, people keep asking me if blondes are having more fun. I'm like, yeah, man. Set them up. You like, knock them down. Being a blonde Asian is kind of like having a mullet, you know? Like white trash in the back <laughs> cash only in the front <laughs> yeah. nice nice <laughs> i wish i had something to for people to make a fetish out of me for i was thinking about this today i would i would like to make money that a way a fetish yeah like if i had like a f- the kind of feet that people would pay me to show feet, feet. Uh, if my balls look a certain way what fetish. who's paying for your balls <laughs> who's paying me? for There's balls fetishes photos? everywhere Fetishes everywhere. People pay to see a lot of stuff. So Josh has a specific. It's almost like you ever see Taken. He's got a specific set of skills <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to fetish. He's like, I, I, I can will figure out how to mon- monetize <laughs> yeah. anything. Are yeah. you are you saying I hit a lot of categories on the adult websites? I think I'm it, saying it, if you airplane, decided to go the airplane porn was what the one that caught my. No, I'm just <laughs> the way things now are. From a marketing perspective, you're looking mm-hmm. at, okay, these are the things that are tracking uh, trend-wise, right? Mm. So usually if you look at porn trends and then you look at internet trends and you look at social media trends, you can, cross, simultaneous? you can cross-reference those things. If you're being smart, you should cross-reference <laughs> all things that are trending, especially if your whole job is to get followers. I, I, if I had cross-reference <laughs> trends... I'd be on OnlyFans all day selling these jokes, this dick, these feet, whatever I could do. Do you think, let me ask you I a question. I think you could hit it off with the gay community. I would. Yeah. Oh my God, those would be my people. They still are my people. For but sure. I just can't sleep with them because I, I can't get off to it. But here's the thing. I don't think if you're like crossing OnlyFans with comedy. I don't suggest doing this. But, but here's the thing. I, I don't, like when I'm ready to like come. I don't, I don't want to write these punches. I don't want any jokes, though. You know what I mean? I don't want anybody joking around while I'm trying to have sex. I, I don't think you have to do it right? all at the Wait, same time. Wait, what are you time. talking about right now? <laughs> you're saying like you're going to do OnlyFans. No, no, no. Here's, 
Here's what I'm saying. Well, you know OnlyFans has comedy on right I know, now, right? Yeah, it's, it's like I going had, anywhere. Hey, you know who sure. uh, you know who did one of those shows and just went off on them? Um, who would we have on? Carmen um, Lagala. Lagala. Uh huh. She was. I saw some. She was doing. And she's like, yeah, I played one of these OnlyFans shows, and in the front row, like the whole audience is just influencers. And uh, only fan creators uh-huh. and she specifically names one of them i forgot who it was oh. and just rails her for just sitting there and being like oh so the <laughs> audience isn't even a real audience they don't want to laugh at only fans it's people? just only this they whatever gig she did i don't know if they're all like that but yeah, i don't know i, I thought a, it was pretty funny i, I don't only... know why you would want to cross comedy with a lot uh, of people do a lot of people no. do very well on just being on OnlyFans and also promoting their shows and their fans will come out to the show itself. But I don't know if that attracts the right fan, but... Listen, the only thing that feels better than coming is laughing really hard. Maybe that's why, right? That should be your tagline <laughs> on your OnlyFans. <laughs> Dude, honestly... I'm the friendly I skies. Like, the way you delivered that, I would, I would actually <laughs> say what's See? That? I would See? click that. I love everyone's I know. against me on this show tonight, but I'm doing it right today. <laughs> Some way she, the way she said it, you... Uh, I'm like, ah, all right, buddy. <laughs> I'm like, all right, pal. There's the only thing that feels <laughs> better than coming is laughing. <laughs> Yeah, see, I just unsubscribed. I just unsubscribed when he said that. It's because of my nose. Oh my it's because of this nose. I didn't want to say it out loud. It is. It's fucking racist. <laughs> racist against this Italian. This fucking guinea nose. It's because it's been bashed in. You're racist against Italians. That's your problem. <laughs> I like how you blame that nose on Italians. You've been, it, it, it's been mangled so many times. You got your ass kicked so many times. <laughs> had my face punched so many times. <laughs> it's like you, you blame it on your genetics. It's more because you're an asshole. I hate it. <laughs> I broke this when I didn't do anything wrong. I just uh, got, yeah, I got right. clocked for no reason. Uh, if anybody looks like they got their nose punched in, it's me. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what, though? Yours is looking solid. It's it doesn't solid. look fucked up. Okay. Like mine's you ever like, break your nose? Mm-mm. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. This You're nose good. It's been broken so many times. Yeah, well. I've got my ass kicked. <laughs> By the cops, dude. <laughs> cops, a fraternity. Family members. Yeah, family. <laughs> it's just I mean, hey, drug it. dealers. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Oh my god! I called out a whole fraternity one time. I was like, "Come on!" Oh, oh yes. Yes. I love Eddie Fire. McGowan. Yeah, I dude. love addict Eddie dude. McGowan. Dude. Oh my god! Oh, you ever been in a fist fight before we let you out of here? Um, people at a job have... on the plane. You ever get in a fight on the plane? Nope, not on the plane. But people have taken a swing at me before. Yeah. What did you say to him? Context, but like, what was the setting? Like one time, it was just at a concert, and this girl thought I was looking at her wrong, and she just punched me. Whoa! And I was, I was like, I didn't even know what it was about, you know. And she goes, "I see the way you're looking at me. I'm a cop. I'm a Romulus cop." And I'm like, I don't know (laughs) what that means. Well, Romulus city, you know, in Michigan, Michigan, right? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know Romulus. Uh, Okay, yeah. And uh, and I was like, okay, like, uh, I don't know what to do from here. Yeah, and I looked at her and I'm like, yeah, I can't take her, so I just walked away. Yeah, 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 right. What was the uh, what was the concert? It was a country concert. It was like not even. Anything. Who was it? George Strait and, yeah. and Sura. It was literally like the most docile music you could think of, talking about grandma's chicken and their dogs. What were you doing there? You know, you I love some country, huh? I grew up around a lot of white people. Yeah, you love like, that of country. course, we're gonna go to like Rascal Flats was like our graduation. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. Yeah. Sura getting in fights. Rascal the cop yeah. punched Sura on the face at a Rascal Flats concert. <laughs> yeah, that's how I got a flat face. <laughs> got Rascal Flats. Plug where you're at. So where can people find you? Uh, I'm a hoorah for Sura on everything. That's H O O R A number four S O O R A. Awesome. awesome. Anything they look forward to? The, the tour stuff's all up on your. You have a website. Any like a special come? Anything they should know about beyond that? Just go to the social media. Yeah, I'm with Nate Jackson for the remainder of the year. NateJacksonComedy.com. Awesome. awesome. Nice. So I'll Great. be on all those dates. Uh, awesome. At Josh Ricardo, JoshRicardo.com. We will be in Detroit. Uh, dude, we're at like seven different dates that are going up in the next week. So make sure you check back in uh, to see where the tour is going next. Awesome. Follow me on Instagram at Edmund Comedy. Go to edmundgowan.com to see my city dates and all our tour dates. And then if you want to contact us, email us. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you've ever gotten punched in the face at a flat, Rascal Flats concert, <laughs> if you've ever been a stewardess. Oh, oh, working class old. 
<laughs> Working class souls office party come into an office near you. Oh, we are playing yeah. holiday parties all throughout offices in the tri-state area. If you're interested, email us at that website. And Working we'll, we'll class get comedians at gmail.com. All right, we'll see you guys again next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on. 